Thank you for joining me today on another podcast. Okay, today I want to speak primarily to people who has not been saved or people just going to come to church, don't really know what this is about, or new Christians, or just a refresher of where we came from. I'll be talking about from Adam to Christ. I won't be long, I, but I will go as the Lord direct my path. I'll be right back. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the chance just to live for you. Thank you so much for your word, for your son dying on the cross for our sins. Help me to be able to communicate that that precious gift to others out there. That you died on the cross for our sins. That you made a path. You opened up the path for us to follow. Help me, Jesus. Anoint me, anoint me to speak your word. Help me to be clear and precise and effective. But take my words, take my feeble words and anoint them and touch someone out there. Help them to understand where we are. In your holy name, I praise you, Father, forever. As you give me the strength, as you give me the, the utterance, I ask that you will anoint me. Help me to speak the word of truth. In your most holy name, of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me. I'm pretty sure everybody heard about Adam and Eve. Old Christians, no big deal. You, you, that's old knowledge, stuff that we don't even even think about anymore. But for new Christians, you know, they haven't heard about it. They heard a lot about the end times and about politics. I'm just going to go over basics. I'm not a theologian. I'm just a person that has been touched by the Lord. So I'm just going to go over these scriptures with you and give my comments on them. And I pray that the Lord will bless you and touch you. Okay. I met a friend. I had a friend one time. He said, uh, I, I'm a good person. Why do people call me a sinner? What did I do wrong to be a sinner? I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't hurt nobody. I don't drink. I don't go to strip clubs. I don't this, that. Basically, I'm a good person. I heard people in the LTGB. I got to learn those letters. In the gay community, say, we'll be, I sat down and talked. They said, okay, they, wish they, they say they want to have a talk, so I sat down and talked with them. Basically, that's what they want. They want us to sit down and talk to them. They want us to understand that they are good people. Well, it's not about being good. It's not about your goodness. See, what happened was, let me go to Genesis chapter 3. Uh, Starting with verse 1. This is Adam and Eve in the fall of mankind. We had a righteous nature. Adam had a righteous nature. He was pure before God. Him and his wife both. But what happened was, let me read it. Now, the serpent, first, first of all, God gave him commandments. That they should obey. And God take obeying him seriously. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. Which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman. God has. In- has God indeed said. 
See, that's what Satan always do. Question God. Get you to question God. Okay, let me go ahead. Said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat up the tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. See, God has commanded them not to eat of the fruit of a certain tree in the garden of Eden. Okay, verse 3. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, God has said, you should not eat. You should not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, they're speaking of a spiritual death. Then the serpent said to the woman, because, let me go back, because when you sin, when you disobey God, it is like a perfectly sterilized room. No germs in it at all. Like an operating room. As soon as germs get in that room, it's no longer sterile, sterile anymore. And everything has to be worse sterilized again. It's much more stronger than that. So the servant said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat up, eat you eat of it you your eyes will be open and you will be like god knowing good and evil so when the woman saw the tree was good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes what god has forbidden we found pleasing to our eyes sometimes that's what causes our downfall and he said, let me go on. And desirable to make one wise, she took, she took it and ate it. She took up the fruit and ate, and she gave to her husband, who ought to know better, because the command was given to him first. So the man was placed as the head of his home. He was the head over his household in the garden of eating, and he was the priest of his household. So he should have corrected her because God has commanded him first not to eat up the tree. She so gave to her husband. And he ate. And the eyes of both of them were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. Okay. This is when Adam sinned. And it says in verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord, the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God Almighty and the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? He hid himself because he know he disobeyed God. And God asked him, where are you? Where is he? He has fallen from grace because of his sin. They were perfect, sterilized, clean. And that germs, those germs of sin came in. And they're much stronger than just germs. Sin wiped away because of because of his disobedience, sin came into the world. And he has fallen from grace, from God. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Sin ruined that special opportunity that we had to live forever. But God has a plan. God had a plan to restore us back 
to eternal life, back to profession, profession, perfection in walking with him. Down through the years, there was a great oral tradition. From Adam to the rest of the world, I'm getting to this, this in a minute, Abraham to Moses. Let me read Romans 120. Since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He's talking about everyone. God's eternal power, who he is, is seen in nature. But we refuse to see him as God, it says in Romans. The knowledge of God will pass down to the generations. And not everybody heeded that knowledge. They see it as just fairy tales like they do now. Stories pass along. Stories that talk about doing a campfire. Stories that people made up. But there was one man who believed him. And he, because he heard the voice of God calling him out. His name was Abraham. Abraham had a son, Isaac. I'm moving, I'm moving a little long. Some people who have been saved a while know the story. Abraham, Isaac, and then there was another son. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And they were known as the children of, of Israel. And those 12 sons were called the 12 tribes of Israel. And they... Excuse me. And Israel went into bondage in, in Egypt for 40 plus years. God raised up a man named Moses, brought him out. They came to Mount Sinai where God has given them a law. Apart from the rest of the world, who was still responsible for their actions. They were still responsible for their conscience. Their conscience made them aware of God. God made them aware through creation, but they rejected that. But God has, has given Israel a law apart from the world, rest of the world. It was known as the Mosaic Law. In this law, most people know it as the Ten Commandments, but there were six, six, 600, over 600 uh, articles of law that they had to know, that they had to live by. And it was established in Genesis because that God requires a blood atonement. When God took those fig leaves off that they had made, and he made skins from animals, made clothing from skins of animals, and gave them to wear. Now, in Leviticus, it says, Leviticus 1711, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the souls. Now, blood sacrifice was God's way 
of bringing atonement. Atonement is restoration and bringing people back from the fall that Adam brought into the world. And in this atonement, they had to make sacrifices. There are four basic sacrifices. There's more. They had to make a burnt offering for their general sins. Any sin that a person committed, that's, I mean, that's basic sins. You may have forgotten that you did, you have sinned, or you're not sure that you did sin, but you will go and make a offering for that sin. For general sins, you don't know. I'm going to go do it anyway. Sacrifice to God. In every sacrifice, you don't just make one sacrifice. I'm a peace offering. What's well, another one? But what? But I'm gonna go to sin offering first. Sin offerings were specific offerings, certain offerings that you did, certain sins that you did. You know that that was wrong. All the sins you know they were wrong. You go, you make your sacrifice. But there were some sins that you would be stoned for. There was no offering. There's no getting out of it. You commit it. You probably could make an offering for it, but you're still going to be stoned. Adultery. A whole lot of sins that you would have been stoned for. But we are under grace at this time now. So you don't get stoned for sins you committed. But under the law, it was like an iron rod. Strict adherence to the law. Let me go back. Sin offerings was the second one. Second one was peace offering. Whenever you did a burnt offering or a sin offering, you also had to do a peace offering. Once you do that, you were you were restored in a in a right relationship before God. You were in right standing before God. But in this, many people. Kept sinning anyway. They knew how strict the law was. Israel kept sinning. Israel kept going to other gods. They had to bring a sacrifice, an unspotted sacrifice. The lamb of whatever they brought had to be perfect, unspotted. And no man could match that. No man could equal, equal that. Unspotted, perfect offering to God. Restoring ourselves before God. Now, in Leviticus, there was a time once a year when the high priest, they would bring their offerings to the priest to make those sacrifices in the temple. But the high priest, only the high priest could go into the holy of holies. That's the innermost part of the uh, top of the temple. He would go there once a year and make a sacrifice for the whole nation. First, he would make it for himself. Then he would go and make it for the whole nation. Blotting out his sin first. Then he would do it for the whole nation of Israel. A blood sacrifice. That was under the law. The law of Moses. As I said, it was strict adherence to the law. Over 600 articles that you were responsible to keep. Everybody know your business. When you walk into the, to the city, the camp, Carrying a lamb for the priest to inspect it. They know you sin. But not but under Christ, you can just go to him in the prophecy of your own home and tell him what's what happened. What's wrong? You just talk to him like a like a friend. 
But there you had to get the priest to inspect it. Then you could go and offer it. A blood sacrifice to atone for your sins. And it had to be a perfect animal, unspotted, no blemishes on it whatsoever. And the priest had to go offer up sin for his own sins. But now, as I said, outside of Israel, the people outside of Israel were known as the Gentiles. You got Israel and you got the Gentiles. The Gentiles were still responsible for the way they live. But God gave the law to Israel. Now, that brings me to Hebrews chapter 9. As I said before, only the high priest could go into the, the innermost part of the temple to offer up sacrifices to God for the whole nation. Let me go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Here we go. So when Christ came, he became our high priest. God wasn't satisfied with just animals. And nobody was perfect. No man was perfect enough. No animal was perfect enough. Even though those animals had to be without spot or blemish, they were not perfect enough. It only could satisfy for a small season. He couldn't take away the sins of a person. But let's go on to read 9, 11 Hebrews. But Christ came as high priest of good things to come. With the great, greater and more perf perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, attaining a general redemption. Once and for all, that was it. It wasn't every year, and he didn't have to offer up sacrifices for himself. Once a year, he offered himself. God came down as a man, Jesus Christ, and he's all offered himself up as a sacrifice, a blemish. You see, in the Old Testament, they had to place their hands on the animal when the priest slaughtered the animal for their sins. But in Christ, we have to believe in him. We put our heart on him. Because he became the sacrifice for us. Let me finish. Okay. All have attained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bullocks, bulls, and goats, and the ashes of heifers sprinkled the unclean sacrifice for the purifying of the flesh. You see, when they sacrificed those animals, it was for the purifying of the flesh of the individual. Now, if, if an animal could do that. How much more should the blood of Christ, who true the eternal spirit, him, offered himself without spot to God, cleansing your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, Christ as a high priest, once and for all, came and offered himself up for the sins of the nation then what about the law? Are you still under the law since we have a new high priest? And what about the Gentiles? What about the Gentiles? Are they included in this? All right. So let me go to Galatians 3. But the scriptures has confirmed all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But 
Before faith came, we were kept guard by the law. Paul, he is speaking to a, uh, a Jewish believers. Kept by guard by the law. Kept for the faith which would afterwards be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But faith has but after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. And the tutor, what it says in verse 24, the tutor was our law, was our, the law was our tutor. Verse 25, when faith came, faith in Christ, we no longer need a tutor. But Christ has already entered that holy place, holy, most holy place, and offered himself up as an offering for our sins. Therefore, let me go to uh, 5.18, Romans 5.18. Therefore, as the one man's offense, judgment came to all men. Talk about Adam, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, Jesus, the free gift, salvation, came to all men, resulting in justification for life. Okay. One more verse, verse 10. For with the heart, one believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. One man sin, our our head. He was the beginning of the human race. We inherit his nature. He be, ha, received a sin nature when he disobeyed God. He was corrupted, and God said, "I have a plan to fix this." You say, "Why didn't God do it right then?" There, I don't know. Nobody can tell you that. But this is what God's plan is. Jesus Christ, the righteous. 518. You make confessions unto God for salvation. You don't have to go to a priest. Because Christ is our high priest. Now let me go to uh, Colossians, second Colossians. Um, excuse me. Second Corinthians. 521 for he made him who know no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness righteousness of God in him he one did it Jesus Christ came to die on the cross by dying on the cross by, by allowing men to kill him and crucify him, he was, in fact, offering himself up to God as a unblemished, perfect sacrifice, as priest, as offering, and king. He offered up himself to save us from this sin nature. That is how, why you are a sinner, because Adam sinned and we inherit his nature. It is not our good acts. It's not how good you are. Let me go to what the most popular verse in the Bible. So, therefore, it says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall ever believe confession is made from the mouth that you may believe in righteousness. Let me f continue. So that who shall ever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world's already been condemned because of the nature, the sin nature. But he came to offer a way out of it. That whosoever, whosoever believe in him will have eternal life. All you got to do is confess to him. You, mean, you need to acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner because you have that sin nature. And repentance is required to be a Christian, to be saved. Let me go to Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Confess to him. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner, Lord. And you are the Lord, you are the Lord Jesus Christ, and I believe in you. And I believe God has raised you from the dead. By confessing that you believe God has raised, raised him from the dead, you are confessing his deity. Because there's no other power. No one could raise himself from the dead. Only God. His flesh died. And he raised it back up. You are confessing his deity. First sin. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, righteousness and with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. That is clean and redeemed by his blood. This was brought to the, Gen the Jews first. The preaching of the gospel, that's why Jesus, a Jew, was preaching to his people. He came to them first because they was through Abraham. Therefore, they did not receive as a nation not individual groups and people, but as a nation, as a whole, did not receive him. But some did. A lot did. And what about on the outside, Gentiles? Okay, here we go. Ephesians 2.11. Therefore, remember that once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised, that's the Gentiles, by who is called the circumcised, that's Israel, made in the flesh by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being alien from the common world for Israel, strangers from the co covenant, the promise, having no hope without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus you once we were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of petition, abolishing in his flesh the enmity that is the law, the commandments, Contained in the ordinance, so that's in the ordinance, so as to create in himself one new man from two, from the two, thus making peace. And he might re reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting death the enmity. And he came preaching peace to you who were far off and those who were near. Outside of Israel, or far off, Israel near. 
Let me read verse 18. For through, for through him, we both, Israel, Gentiles, have, bo have both have access by one spirit to the Father. Gentiles are now included. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's easy. You confess to him, acknowledge that sin nature. You repent. It's a humility thing. You humble yourself before God. Lord, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. I want to serve you. I ask that you would be my God. Live in my heart. Ask them to forgive you. Repent. And he will save you. Just tell them, I want to be saved. I want to be like you. I want to be, the, I want to be a Christian. And God will save your soul. And you will be welcome into the household of God, into the family of truth. Father God, touch the one out there. Bring him home. Let him walk in truth and follow you, O Lord. In your most holy name I pray. Well, I give you the glory, I give you the praise in your wonderful name. Thank you for joining me. I see you next time. Well, I, you see me. I, I won't see you. I don't know who, who is out there. But I thank God that I have a chance to talk to you in Jesus' holy name. My name is William Watson, and thank you for joining me. If you have any prayer requests, you can send it to call to serve 316 at gmail.com. Any prayer requests or comments, call to serve 316 at gmail.com. You can also join me on Facebook, William A. Watson, or Facebook page, William Watson, or my YouTube page, W. Watson123, or Call to Sir Podcast. Music was performed and written by Julius H. Nieder Section. So I want you to have a wonderful day. I'll be praying for you. God bless you.